the original Game Boy is still one of the most revolutionary products that Nintendo has ever made. While it may have been technologically inferior to its competitors with its graphics and a lack of a backlight, its games were so good that none of that mattered. But now it's 2022 and we can make it look a lot better. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to install a brand new backlit IPS display with adjustable brightness and multiple color palettes. While we're at it, I'm gonna give it the ultimate 90s look. And if you think it's too hard for you, I promise it's one of the easiest Game Boy mods to do. Just like how easy it was to choose my sponsor. Me, I'm sponsoring my own video. If you're still too scared to do it yourself, but you want your own, you can buy one pre-modded from me on my website at retroremaster.com. But you really should watch the full video because I believe you can do this too. You can do it. Got the mod kit. I think this is probably the easiest one to do. Soldering, still required. Things might be a little bit of a pain depending on what route you go. Let's just get into it. First and foremost, I would like to thank Retro Modding for sending this out. They gave me a care package a while ago and I'm still slowly getting to all the DMGs, but if you like this shell, you can buy it at retromodding.com and you can use code Jake to save 5%. That's anything store-wide there. You can also get the mod kits there. But let's get into the first big point I would like to make. If you buy a shell from Retro Modding, you're probably gonna have to trim it. I'll go over that later because we're gonna have to do it for this one, but that's probably the hardest part other than the soldering, but really the soldering is fairly easy. They also don't come with buttons or really anything it's just the plastic. We're gonna even have to trade these over. So if you are trimming, you're gonna need this. Unless you don't want sound, you're gonna need a soldering iron. You're gonna want some sort of screwdriver kit. I use the iFixit one because it's got everything I need. Not sponsored, still wish I was, hit me up. I can make a mean ad or a good, a good ad, not mean. But you're gonna need a tri-wing and a Phillips head. Technically JIS, I say that every time. Phillips will work just fine, just be a little more careful. I always recommend some sort of tweezers. Again, we'll come with the iFixit kit. Flush cutters and wire strippers are always nice. Your mom's toothbrush if you wanna clean up the insides. And I always recommend some sort of flux when you're soldering. It's helpful for experts and beginners alike. It's not a crutch. It's a useful tool. And I feel like this goes without saying, but for soldering, you're gonna need some solder. This is all I have left from my roll. I need to go buy more. And IPA is always good, not beer. Haha, -ha, funny, you're so talented with your jokes. 99% is great. It's the best stuff you can get. 90, even 70% is okay. I think that's all the prerequisites. Let's get into the build. Oh, and it looks like these are Phillips for me. Normally the outside screws, these six screws here, are going to be tri-wings. Most likely you're gonna need a tri-wing bit. Assuming you know how to unscrew, I will show all of these, but we're just gonna go right through it. I went through the motions, but I actually didn't have a full set of screws in here apparently. But usually in the battery covers of your new shells, you'll find screws. So if you're missing some, don't worry. Unless they're really crappy screws, I highly recommend using the screws that come with your shell. They're usually made for that shell specifically, so sometimes the original ones aren't your best bet. We will be using these ones today though. Now we can just lift up and pull back, opening the notebook as I like to say. In this case, we've got the big fat ribbon cable right here. You can just pull up. If you do buy an aftermarket speaker for this, you don't need this back half, but I'm gonna show you how to get the speaker out because this is the in-depth tutorial. We're gonna put the back half off to the side right now, and if you bought an aftermarket speaker, you can go ahead and skip this part. And there are a butt ton of screws here, a metric butt ton for you guys across the pond. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 of these. And they're all the same screws, so don't worry about organizing them. We should be able to just lift it up by both sides. Sometimes like this one, they're a little sticky. That's all right, just pull them up. These were made in 1989. There's gonna be a bit of stickiness in there. We don't need anything else from that front half. We can take the easy way or the easy medium way or the easy, medium, hard way. Or the sort of hard with a touch of awkward, easy, difficult, challenging way. There's only really two options here. If you don't want to desolder, which is harder than soldering, you can just take your flush cutters and snip these right off. But then you'll have to strip the wires and start over. They'll be a little shorter. But for me, it's not that hard to desolder, so let's just do that real quick. I'm gonna use the shell as a base. Turn on your soldering iron. I'm gonna clean the tip real quick. 
I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder to this. Push the solder into the iron just like that. The flux that's in the solder will activate, so you don't need to add any flux, but you can also just add some flux right there. And what I'm gonna do is take my tweezers, pull on one end, and just heat that up, and it's gonna come right through. We'll do it again here. Boom. Simple as that. It's really easy. Unplugging and turning off the soldering iron, we can move on. Set the speaker off to the side. You will need that later, obviously. And you can put the rest of your crap off to the side too. Get the back half back out. And on this side, there are four screws right here and right here. And here, we can just pull this out. All the important stuff is on the back half. So really, as long as you have a speaker and this back half, that's really all you need. But since we're using a retro mounting shell, we're gonna have to steal more things from this. But you'll need to get these four screws out and you can just take that metal piece right out. And now we're gonna need to get these battery contacts out. Retro mounting does not include these with the shell. You can buy them separately if you want, but might as well reuse them. Speaking directly to retro mounting here, I would really like to see not only these pre-trimmed, but also come with the basic stuff like the battery contacts the shielding, the stuff that's pretty much included with every other shell on the market. It would really improve your already top of the line product and it being pre-trimmed isn't gonna hurt the people who want to use these shells on, on an unmodded Game Boy. But anyways, there are tabs on the insides here. We can take our tweezers and push down and push forward and those will come right out. There's two over here that are infinitely harder to show on camera. So you probably just get to see my hand doing it, but it's the same process. Now we are officially done with the old stuff. We've got what we need and now we can work on the new shell. What I like to do is take my fingernail and pull these tabs back out because those tabs keep these from falling out of the system. Don't pull them too far or else it won't go back in the shell but when we took them out, they did go back pretty flat. But these also do matter what slot you put them in. The negative terminal is the springy one. So if there's a negative, make sure there's a springy end there, just like that. So now that we've got the top one in, we can put both of these in the exact same way. It should look like this. If you want to, you can take your IPA and like a paper towel or something, clean this off. This is actually fairly clean, probably because I cleaned it when I worked on this before. I always clean and test all of my Game Boys when I get them in because I buy them broken. And this goes in just like this. I'm going to reuse the four smaller screws from earlier because I don't think that they actually have any of these screws for this kit. And before we button up the back half, we're going to have to trim the shell. This little piece sticking up right here needs to go away. Take your flush cutters or your craft knife. Just go snip, snip, snip. And it should be flush like this. If you don't trim that, it's not gonna work properly. The contrast wheel is turned into a brightness wheel. So if you're trying to turn that or push it in, it's going to stick a lot because of that plastic piece. So that's why we trim it. Now we can get the power switch out. The fat tab that sticks out goes in that slot. I recommend having it all the way to the left because that's the off position. And most likely your power switch is gonna be in the off position already, it should be. Then we can just drop this in nice and easily, boom. Everything should fit into its spots automatically. This block is for the headphone jack to fit in perfectly. And there's slots for this board right here. I have no idea what that board does. Let me know in the comments. Now I'm gonna get out our screws. And in this case, if you're using a retro mounting shell, all the black screws are going to be the same. And we're gonna put those in those four spots that we took the ones out of earlier. They are a little shorter, but they work just fine. And your back half should look something like this. You can also go ahead and put your new link port cover in. Now we're gonna do the fun part. That was sarcasm. I'm gonna get out the mod kit for illustration purposes here. If you have one of the fatter screens like this one, then you're gonna have to trim it. If it's thinner and taller, you don't have to trim it. But because we have that bigger screen, this is gonna cut off some of that screen. We also have a pre-cut lens, so none of the lens border blocks any of the screen. And if you don't trim it, it's gonna look something like this. I've since fixed that Game Boy, so if you buy the Slime Boy from RetroRemastered.com, then it'll all be good. See how this indents right here? I'm gonna cut it along that line and take about that much off of each side. And we'll fast forward through this because I don't think I need to teach you guys how to cut things. All right, 
And if you're wondering, hey, Jake, how do I know if I've cut it enough? You can take your screen lens before you take the peel off, just rest it in its spot. If you can see all these outlines where the screen hole is cut, then you're good. I think I need to cut just a bit more. If you're worried about it being an ugly hole like this is right now, don't worry because this will cover it, the borders will cover it. But I gotta shave a little more off. Also, another reason why I'm not a huge fan of trimming shelves, you might cut yourself. Thankfully, it's more of a light scrape. I, I won't get any blood on your Game Boy, I promise. Now we have a giant mess and a bunch of shavings all over me. I'm actually gonna get this back out and once again, use it for soldering. What we're gonna do here is stick these two wires back in these holes on our new PCB, just like that. Now I like to try and bend them over, that way they hopefully stick in. Now we're gonna solder the speaker on. This is the only soldering we need to do for the rest of this build. If you want, you can get out your flux, line it up, turn on your soldering iron, and once again, push the solder into the iron. Boom, should have done the far one first. Do the same thing. I got a bit much on that first one, but it's okay. As long as those blobs aren't touching each other, it's fine. Not the best soldering job for me, but it'll do. I unplug my soldering iron, and now it's off, and we're done with the soldering. If you want, you can spray with IPA, grab your mom's toothbrush. Again, this wasn't my best soldering work, but even if it looks like this, this is still good. Now what I like to do is put the screen lens down and line it up with the shell. Don't actually stick it down yet. We're gonna put the screen in first. Not everybody does this, but but when you buy some of these kits, it will come with a guide. That's what it's called. Couldn't think of the word guide. It'll come with a guide. And so you can just flip that open. And everything should fit into place just like this. Uh, if you are using the skinnier versions, the V3 of this, you're gonna need to trim these two posts down and then this post right here. We aren't gonna have to trim any of that though. This is still very loose in this guide, but you can peel this and try to set this down without getting any fingerprints on the screen. I like to put my finger lightly right here And then just let the guide do its job. If yours gets out of whack, you can just take your tweezers, push it down. Everything looks good over here. So before we get too much further, I'm actually gonna put the screen lens on so we can get minimal dust in there and hopefully no fingerprints. So we're gonna actually peel this up. We can peel this up and then give us enough of an edge to pull up without getting our grubby little fingerprints on the screen. Grabbing it by the sides, we can lay this down, and boom, no fingerprints, no dust, and now we can finish this up. From here, put your buttons in, D-pad, A and B are the same, so you don't have to follow my little A on the inside, B on the outside. Get out your membranes, start and select our all membrane, D-pad, and A and B. Then we can take our back half PCB, Find the tab hole in the tab on the speaker. Fit that in there. I'm gonna lift this bail up. It should be pretty loose since there's nothing in it. And then we can stick this little ribbon cable in there. It can be a little hard to put this one in if you want to take the PCB out and stick the ribbon cable in before you put it down. Either way is fine. From here, we can use all the black Phillips head screws. There are some screw holes missing from the original ones because we don't need them and it would go right through the screen if we did use them. There's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and the last one here. And now time for the last ribbon cable. This is the fat ribbon cable. Honestly, trickier than anything else in this, besides probably the trimming. Both are gonna go in pin side up. Stick this in like this. 
it's not easy so take your time it almost feels too thick but it will fit, I promise. Be careful of the corners because you can fold them if you don't have it lined up perfectly, but it should look like this. And then the even trickier part, taking your back half and connecting that. This might be the best way to show it. Got it lined up. Boom. It's okay to bend these a little bit. Don't like full on crease them, but if you bend it, it's probably fine it should now look something like this and we can close that back up and put the final six screws in these screws from retro modding the silver ones are the longer ones for the outside and they are phillips heads so no tri wings today apparently and now we can put our four batteries in i'm gonna put my handy dandy test cart from natalie the nerd and here we go It reads games, start, select, A, B, right, left, down, and up. Beautiful. Our screen is a little bit off here, but if you hold down the brightness wheel, which used to be the contrast wheel, and if your wheel is getting a little stuck like mine is here, you probably just need to loosen the screw a little bit. So holding it in and scrolling down, you have all your settings. You can turn on a battery notification. It doesn't really work. It just tells you when it's full and when it's about to die. And most of the time it says it's about to die. You can also turn on the pixel effect, which is just the grid lines, but you go through the menu by scrolling up and down, and then you press in when you wanna go to that specific setting. And now I can scroll and change the position of the vertical but we just want to line it up. The horizontal is perfect. Using the scroll wheel without any menus up will just do the brightness on its own and we can turn that off. And that's how you mod a DMG. See, it's really simple. Even more simple when you get a pre-cut shell like this. When everything's pre-installed and you don't have to cut anything, it's literally like five steps in 10 minutes, the way it should be. But if you still don't think this is something you can do, which you totally can, I guess you can buy one from me pre-built at RetroRemaster.com. It would really mean the world to me if you subscribed. We're so close to 10 million, it's really unbelievable. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later guys. I just need to do something while the music was fading out from the intro. This is honestly probably the easiest one. It's even easier when you actually bring the mod kit over here.